How do I say this? Wow, I'm getting nervous. Okay. Let me take a second. What's up, everybody? It's your girl, Lay Juice, and we're back with another episode of The Daily Squeeze. Thank you so much for tuning in this week. I hope that you had an amazing week as you've reflected and, you know, gotten ready to get to the squeeze, all right? So let's dive in. Going back to our conversation on satisfaction versus fulfillment, the reason why it's so critical that we recognize it is so much more important to reach a level of fulfillment versus satisfaction is because satisfaction is temporary, right? It's like looking at joy versus happiness. Happiness is an emotion, okay? One day this make you happy, the next day, all right, I'm over it, okay? So your emotions shift just like the weather. But your state of being is what's constant. Fulfillment is a state of being versus satisfaction, which is temporary. It's fleeting. And we fill that feeling with things. And when those things don't work, we fill them with other things. So the real question is, what are you running to? What are you looking to satisfy you? Then... The next question is, why are you looking to that to be the source of your satisfaction? For example, when I think about myself growing up, I always used food as a coping mechanism. There was something about the soothing nature of eating, having control of what I put in my mouth, having control of how much I ate having control of if I'm going to eat to the point where I give myself a stomach ache and I cause pain to myself, it's something that I'm doing, not anyone else. I have that power. When you're able to recognize that the methods that you are using to to satisfy the cravings of longing, the cravings of reaching fulfillment, when you, when you recognize the actions that you're taking, you're able to sit back and think, okay, I'm doing this because I feel this way. I feel this way because of this experience. This experience stems from this other experience most of the time. When you're, as, you're, as you're going through this journey, I want you to be very, very aware that your mindset has to change. You cannot go through a healing journey without changing your mindset. It all starts up here because you have to rewire yourself to realize that what I'm doing and the reason why I'm doing what I'm doing is not allowing me to reach the highest level of fulfillment that I can. Stop being content with being satisfied. Why would you want to just be okay with being good enough? You are what fearfully and wonderfully made. Whether you want to accept that or not, you are. Because we have all been created in God's image. So why settle for less? Baby, you are worth more than a settlement check, okay? Get your royalties because you are a king and a queen. It is critical that we realize that with no fault of our own and no fault really of anyone else things happen when i think about the people who've abused me it's only because odds are they've been abused themselves and this constant cycle of trying to reconcile their own situation by hurting others unfortunately i fell victim to it However, though they, yes, can be held accountable for the action, the truth is you can't do nothing but feel sorry for them because 
they never had an opportunity to be able to cope with their trauma. And they didn't have the opportunity for whatever reason to be able to find a different way, right? Like I said, I praise the Lord that for me, he gave me laughter. He gave me humor. He gave me optimism. He gave me peace to be able to go through that at such a young age. And even as I got older and not have hatred in my heart, not have resentment in my heart for them to the point where it made me bitter. And I praise the Lord for that because I know that's not, this, that's not the case for many people. But trust me, when you recognize that bad people do bad things, not because they're bad people, but because bad things have happened to them. Like I said, we're just the sum of our experiences. And unfortunately, some of our experiences for some of us are way more negative than others. What determines a person's success isn't how much money they make, isn't the size of their house, isn't what job they have, but it's how they're able to respond in the face of adversity, how they're able to take an obstacle and flip it on its head so that they can actually use that obstacle as a stepping stone to not only elevate themselves, but help lift others up as well. Yes, it was hard. Yes, it hurts. But if you didn't go through that experience, someone else wouldn't have the testimony that you are about to give. Because if you're watching this right now, it's because your breakthrough is going to be the window that allows someone else to see the other side. That was a word. That was a word. Glory to God, because that was his shit. That was a word. That was a word. That was good. Dang. Come on, Lord. I see you, Lord. All right. That was a word. The moment you realize that your journey is what blazes the trail for others to follow behind you, baby, okay? It makes going through this process so much easier because now it's gone from a burden to a task. Mm. from a burden to a task. Now you getting to the end becomes a goal. Why? Because someone else depends on you, whether it's your mom, your dad, your sister, your baby, if you got a baby, or just some random Joe Blow that happens to be scrolling through your page and you seize your testimony there. Your life is a story that the world is supposed to see. And no, you don't have to share the most intimate parts of yourself to everyone. But the, the parts that you do share, you just being able to walk and still be here, going through what you've gone through, that's a testimony in itself, is worth applauding. Because you should have been taken out a long time ago. But look at you. Look at you. Look at you. You're still here. And me happy to see you, okay? Don't feel as though you're too broken to be fixed because I know a potter, okay, who knows how to take a mess and turn it into a masterpiece because you're looking at one, baby. <laughs> okay. And yes, I still got a lot of work to do and we're doing this journey together, but praise the Lord that I can say the girl that I used to know is no more, all right?
Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, hit that little notification bell so you know every single time that I upload. Look forward to seeing you next week. Remember, you can't get the juice without the squeeze. I'll see ya. Peace. <laughs> How was the whole overall? Um, I almost had a car in me or something. And I think overall it did a very deep episode that like you wouldn't expect like in the second part of the series. I know, it's so much, right? Do um, I post it? Is thing, this intense? It's intense. That's the thing. It's a it, when, we're talking, when you're talking about a healing journey, it's intense, it's, man. It's, it's intense, regardless, right? So how fast it comes to you is the difference when it comes to you you don't know when it comes right like i'm so, just chatting but you're i wasn't expecting to say this now but i just i don't know it's just something in my spirit it just feels like somebody needs to hear this and i just yeah, i don't know it's just like there's i just want to i just want people to i just want me, i just want people to feel where i'm at you know mm -hmm. like, like trauma like, sucks yeah a lot it, it molds who you are. For sure. Which is a beautiful thing. Right. It's like, you know, potter. It's like a potter in clay. Hello, amen. Except that you just got to be careful who's your potter. Ooh, baby. That's a that's a word. It's like potter and the clay. But you got to be careful who your potter is. Mm. It's about the source, baby. Mm -hmm. Who is your source? And also what's in your clay. Ooh. What's in your clay? Not just your wallet, but your clay. Wallet? You never seen what's what's in your wallet? No. That was such a good impression. <laughs> Did I do it again? <laughs>